Hello everybody, this is Karim Cool Cat, and welcome to your 24th C++ tutorial. In this video, we're going to be going over the next class in the standard template library, the queue. And a queue is pretty much the exact opposite of a stack, so I'd recommend watching the stack tutorial before you watch this. So, with a stack, it works on the first in, last out context. So, what that means is that the first element that's pushed into the stack, so the oldest element in the stack, will be the last one that can be popped out of the stack. So with a queue, it works on the exact opposite way, the first in, first out basis, or context. So the first element that you push into a queue, or the oldest element in the queue, will be the first one that can be popped out. So think of queues like people waiting in line to check out at a store. So people are waiting in line, and the first person to check out and leave the store will be the first person that got in line. Then the second person to check out and leave will be the second person in line. Third person to check out and leave will be the third person in line. So it works a lot like that. So like stacks where you can only access the top element, the only elements you can access in a queue are the front element, so the oldest element in the queue, and the back element, so the newest element in the queue. So you can access the back of the line as well, but you can only pop out the element at the front of the line, so keep that in mind. So creating a queue is just like a stack, so standard queue, and you give it its type, we'll use ints again, though you can use any type, just like any template class, so standard queue of ints, and we'll call it queue, I always have trouble spelling this, and pushing elements into the queue is also just like a stack or a vector, so int i equals 0, i is less than 10, I++, plus plus, exact same thing we did with our stack, and we just say q.push, and you give it the element to push in, we'll give it i. So now we have a queue full of 10 numbers, and it's all the numbers from 0 to 9, and our element 0, the number 0, the element with the value 0, that took a long time, will be the one at the front of the line. So it's the one that we can pop out of the stack because it's the first in. And the element at the back of the line will be 9 and we can access it because it has the it will be returned by the function q.back which we'll go over in a minute. So it's at the back of the line so we can access it but we can't pop it out. So let's show this. We'll say standard count and we'll say q dot front so this is the element at the front of the line zero and then we'll say backslash t we'll just put a tab in and then q dot back and then end line so now if we run this we get zero and then nine so the element at the front of the queue and the element at the back of the queue so now, if we want to do the same thing we did in the last video, where we uh, popped off, where we output and then popped off each element of the queue, or in the last video it was a stack, but this time we'll be doing it with a queue, we can do pretty much the exact same thing. We say while not queue dot empty. It has the same empty function. The queue has almost all of the same functions as the stack. So while not queue dot empty, we will standard count, where is it? count, there it is, standard count q dot front and it's a function q dot front and it's not capital there we go q dot front and then backslash t and then we'll say q dot size size and then just for the sake of example we'll say backslash t again and then we'll output the element the back of the queue so this should stay constant since we're never modifying the back of the queue we're only modifying and popping off values from the front so q.back and then finally we'll end the line end line and then we will say q dot pop and this will pop off the front element of the queue so if we run this we get 0 10 and 9 so first element 0 
size of the queue is 10 and the back end length is 9. The back end length is 9 for all of these, so I'm not going to keep saying that. And then once we pop off 0, the front end length elements 1 and it has a size of 9. Then the front element's 2, size of 8, front element is 3, and size of 7, and so on until we get to the last element, which is 9, where the queue has a size of 1. And then that's popped off, and the queue is empty, so the while loop ends. So this is pretty much the exact opposite of a stack, where we started from 9 and went to 0. Uh, we started at 0 at the front of the queue and went to 9. So now the last thing we're going to go over in this video is a function I forgot to mention in the vector and stack tutorial. So it's called, or it's pretty much any of the standard template classes dot swap. So we're going to create a new queue and we'll also fill it with ints and we'll just call it queue2 and here we'll say queue2 dot push and we'll just say uh, 9 minus or 10 minus i. Actually, it would be 9 minus i. So what's going to happen here is Q1 is going to be filled just like before. It's going to be 0 through 9. And Q2 is going to be filled with 9 through 0 because 9 minus 0 is 9, 9 minus 1 is 8, and so on. So it'll be 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then 0. So these queues have the same numbers in the opposite order. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this and we're going to call q.swap where is it? q.swap and we'll give it q2 as a parameter and actually we really shouldn't have gotten rid of the old code we're still going to need that. So now let's just replace this with q2.front. We're just going to be printing out all of the values of q1 and q2. And we'll end the line. But before this, we will say q.swap. And we'll swap it with q2. So basically what the swap function does is it just swaps all the values in this queue with all the values in this queue. So when we run this, we get 9876543210 and we get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. I'm not sure why we get that. One second, let me try something. I assumed it would swap both of them, but we may need to do this as well q2.swap and we'll just give it q. So now if we run this it still doesn't work. One second. Alright, I found the problem and I feel very stupid. I forgot to pop the front values off of q2. So q2.pop, I'm sure you all saw that before I did. So now when we run this we get 9876543210 and 0123456789 when originally, before we called q.swap, uh, this would be the other way around. q1 would hold 0 through 9 going up, and q2 would hold 9 through 0 going down. So q.swap just switches the values of uh, this q and this q. And stacks and vectors have the same function as of C++11, I should say. They have the same function. Before C++11, you would have to call a global function called swap and then pass both q and q2 but c++11 added this syntax so uh, I recommend using this it looks a bit nicer so yeah this just swaps q1 and q2 or any other standard template library classes so that's all for this video again a pretty short video the q isn't that much different than the stack pretty much the same concept just instead of it being a first in last out context, it's a first in first out context. So remember that, that's really the important thing to take out of this tutorial. And in the next video, we will be going over maps. So I'll see you then.